What's up, backgammon fans? I'm Mark Olsen, a backgammon grandmaster. I'm ranked number eight right now in the backgammon galaxy website and app. I'm aiming for number one. And in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a grandmaster sharing secrets while playing video. So uh, let's see if we can find a game. Uh, I'm gonna play a five point match. Um, and uh, the moment I have an opponent, we're gonna put it up on the big screen and, oh, there we go. I've got an opponent. Cool. So let's see. Um, so in the, on the big screen here, I'll be playing as top player. This is my avatar and I'm, I'm the red checkers here playing against an Israeli player. So let's see. It's a rating game, which means we play for rating points as well as galaxy coins. So this one, I'm just gonna split and bring a builder down. Four, two. Yeah, he builds his four point, another five one. <laughs> I need to get my back checkers split because he split his back checkers. I need to split my back checkers. And with the five, mm, let's come out with the five. Four, three, yeah, the three is duplicated. He wants to hit with a three, but he also, he also wants to anchor up with a three. So this is duplicated for him. He has a decision here. He chooses to hit, fair play, five, three. Okay, let's fight for the five point here. I wonder if he missed a double there, maybe not. It's a little bit too early still. Okay, so we, we're gonna anger up, that's for sure here. Uh, make his five point. And then the question is what to do with the three. We're up in the race, so I don't want, like getting hit. So maybe I should just play safe here. Hmm. Should we leave it there? Nah, let's play safe. This is a mutual holding game and typically in mutual holding games, you wanna play safe because the race is really important. And as we can see, I have a small racing advantage up five pips before that that move uh, okay he ran that's a mistake he shouldn't have ran there that was a mistake but i can't really punish him here him here uh, when i hit him well let's make the five point here we need to build some offense now he's going to run to full freedom, of course. Yeah. And this is not too bad, you know, this is, uh, it's a very close game. Let's just build a prime here. Uh, so I'm still in the holding game here, waiting uh, on the anchor on his five point, but the pip count is very close. So it's, I have a small disadvantage because he has full freedom. I'm still trapped, but it's still a close game. It's anybody's game, basically. Okay, I'm just going to build my home board. Get ready if I, I'm lucky enough to hit a shot. But what I really want to do is roll a big double and win the race. Um, this one, how to play it most flexibly. Let's play this one. Yeah, now we're just playing a holding game. And 6-3. Okay, so here, I think I got to let go of the midpoint here because I don't want to bury checkers. So let's let go of the midpoint and stay flexible. 6-2, okay. So he starts to bury some checkers down here. That's a loss of flexibility. It's not so good. Okay, I'm ready. I have a strong board. If he decides to leave a shot at some point. 3-2, okay, got a six prime. Oh no. Okay, now he's got a big advantage. Unless I roll a big double now, it's gonna be a double and a pass. Yeah, I can't take this cube. Let's see if he knows how to double. Yeah, anybody knows how to double this one, right? Um, it's too many pips, 15 pips down with almost no contact. Yeah, that's a drop, that's a drop. With this little contact, I need better racing chances to take the cube. Maybe like 10 pips or something like that. 11, 10, 11, 12 maybe. Ooh, double one. Let's go for the prime. There we go, the prime works. And he rolls an awkward roll here, five, four. So could this be a double? 
this might be an early double based on our priming potential. We're down 1-0, so we want to be slightly more aggressive with the cube. I have a 6-4 that hits. I have all the doubles that steps up and makes an advanced anchor. The race is very close. Um, you know what? Let's double. This is on the aggressive side, but you never know when they're going to pass. And this guy, okay, that was a quick take. <laughs> I think uh, it was more the doubling that, double that was in question here, and he correctly took the cube. But you never know when you're playing against uh, players in the, in the 1600s. Um, the deuce, I'm definitely coming down with the four to the 16 point. And what about the deuce? Are we just are we going to split, or are we just going to play for the prime here? He has a lot of men in the zone, but he doesn't have anything built yet. I'm going to split. Usually, ooh, double sixes. Usually you don't want to split against the blitz formation, but I think it's rather safe here. I've got a stronger inner board. Um, oh, he doesn't even hit. Okay. Double sixes for me. Now I'm really happy that I split my back checkers. Huh? Really happy about that. And yeah, just going to come around the board. And now we're playing a priming battle where I have a big advantage. So what is he going to do here? Yeah. Ooh, that's a hit. That hits in the outside. Beautiful roll. 4-3. That's a joker. Oh, he didn't even hit. He just makes the anchor. I wonder if he even saw he could hit. Uh, he could hit here. With all these blots, I think that was a big blunder by my opponent. So I'm going to definitely hit with the three. What about the deuce? What about the deuce? Are we going to minimize shots here? I really don't want to get hit. Yeah, let's take away some of his shots from the bar. Okay, that's not the best from my point of view because he's going to have a back game now. And it's actually a rather strong back game. Yeah, he knows how to play it. I'm going to be priming all day long here. That was a nice roll to make that eight point here or 17 point. Look at this, now he has to break his rear anchor. Okay, he chooses to make the one point. Now he just has a terrible timing for, for the, uh, the back game. So I could actually, does that make sense to break the eight point? No, I wanna prime. I just wanna prime here and let him crunch. Four, three, okay. He's already starting to crunch a bit. Um, I don't really feel like getting hit here. Can I stay flexible somehow? Not really. Six, three. I'm going to leave uh, four fly shots here in order to unstack a little bit. It would have been a little bit too stiff and stacked if I was to play 13 to 8. Uh -huh, 3 2. Here he's in trouble. Huh? He's going to crunch something. And the question is whether he's going to stay in his back game here in both anchors or is he, if he's going to give up uh, the rear anchor on the 23 point. So let's see how he plays it. Yeah, he does choose to give up on the back game and we will punish him with a 5-3. Beautiful. Beautiful. And now his position is, is really weak. Really, really weak. Um, I don't really want to leave any fly shots here. I really don't want to leave fly shots. This is awkward, actually. Uh, how to play this? Huh. Let's play it like this. It feels weird that I put this, but I, I couldn't really find any other flexible play. I wanted to keep the prime, and this is why, right? Look, he's going to crunch even more. Now I can come home. Just bring my checker home, and now I have a winning position. Uh, should we clear the seven point out of turn here? Might win more gammons. I'm considering clearing out of order, clearing this, the bar point instead of the 17 point. But no, let's just do it in the right order. Might be a small mistake, actually. I'm not sure about that move. Okay, 6-1, clear from the rear. Ask no questions. Six, 
six, two. Ugly, ugly, but not a big problem yet. Double two, that's fine. And he's already beginning to crunch, so let's just get as many checkers off as possible. Six, five, again, two men off. Yeah. Three, two, um, two men off, two men off, six, four, yeah, so this looks like an easy win for team pink, six, three, we might even get lucky and win a gammon here, ooh, two, one, there's a bit of a, there's a little gammon chance here, a very small gammon chance. Oh, I missed it. Okay, at least I'm gonna win two points. Okay, and I spent half my time bank here, so maybe I should play a little bit faster. Talk less, play more. Uh, okay, two, one. So I'm three away, he's four away, which means that I'm gonna be playing slightly more cautious now. I'm, I like splitting my back checkers rather than slotting um, because I'm, I'm gonna try to establish an advanced anchor as soon as possible, so I'm not gonna lose a gammon at this score. Excellent, right? Look at this. Beautiful. I established an advanced anchor. Now it's going to be very difficult to lose a gammon, which is what he wants to do. He wants to win a double gammon. Yeah, we're just developing. 5-4, he should run with the back checker. Good. 6-5, it's a hitter. It's a hitter coming all around the corner. Yeah, let's hit. It's a little bit scary because we do have a weaker inner board and things could go wrong here, but it's just so valuable to get freedom and hit uh, that I think we just have to do it. But he, he's going to hit back here. Oh, he, mm, I think he chose the wrong one here. I think it would have been better for him to come in with a four in order to have the pressure on those two blots. That's beautiful. Let's just clean up our, uh, consolidate our position here. We've got a little bit of a pro Whoa! I think he just did a misclick. <laughs> Look at that. Aye, poor guy. Yeah, oops. <laughs> Aye, poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Oh, and we, <laughs> we punish him big time with a double one. I mean, uh, did, I, oh, did I miss a cube with all those blocks? That was too good, of course. Um, so let's just... Maybe I missed a cube, actually. I got distracted. I forgot to think about, uh, I forgot my own mantra. Every roll is a cube decision. One of my favorite mantras. Anyway, let's just go for the undouble gammon here. Yeah, it's definitely too good. Definitely too good. Um, yeah, let's get an attacker in here on the 20 point, ready to attack. I hope he doesn't roll a deuce here. Oh, he does roll a deuce. So he gets an, actually a pretty well-timed back game here. Um, well, let's see. We want to make a prime. We want to make a prime. How to make a prime. So here, I don't mind if he hits. I don't mind if he hits. So look, I'm just putting out blocks here and here. Let him hit us, you know, because if he hits us, we're gaining timing. And right now, he's right on the borderline being down like, 90 so pips, 95 pips, 97 pips. It's, or what is it, 93 pips. It's barely enough for a well-timed one, two back game. It's the deepest of all the back games. He wants to be like 100 pips down or something like this. So look, he hits us. I'm actually happy that he hits me here. Um, I, re I don't want to hit him. I don't want to hit him here. I want to have him keep, I want him to keep. Be, yeah, I want him to keep moving. I want him to keep moving. Mm, so how many blots should I have around the board here? Maybe I should hit, hit him. Actually, he's getting six men back. Oh, this is difficult.
Oh, should I hit him? No, I'm not gonna hit him. I'm not gonna hit him. But I'm gonna keep my blot here on, uh, on the 17 point, just to confuse him. This is a very complicated position. And I've got one minute and a half left on the time bank. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. he plays impure, makes a three point. Um, I think, is it too good to double? Is it a take? I don't know. Not the best roll for me. Not the best roll for me. Now I kind of don't want to get hit. Yeah, he, he seems to have decent timing. So I'm just going to not double here. How flexibly should I play? I'm maximizing flexibility here with my front checkers and I don't really mind leaving a double shot. Again, he can hit me. It's okay. And now we're getting into something that's probably a double pass at money game. What about at this score? This score is just different. He can take much deeper and I have to be much more careful. And this is a very gammonish position. So again, I just opt to not double. I just opt to not double. Hmm. Yeah. Let's step up. I don't like this front loading of my checkers here, but I couldn't really find any other alternative. I'm still quite happy about this position. Oh, he puts a checker on the ace point. I mean, now it could be a double despite the score. Ah, <laughs> this is complicated. It might be too good. I mean, I think uh, he's probably going to take it, you know, just because it looks like he has a decent back back game, but little does he know that he has terrible timing and that uh, checker there on the ace point is really hurting him. I think this could actually be too good to double. But let's see if he takes it. I have a, I have a feeling that he takes the cube. I think it's probably like 30% chance, maybe even higher, that he takes this cube. And it might be too good to double. <laughs> so... It's a good little, uh, I wouldn't call it a bluff cube, it's like the opposite, you know, you want him to take this cube. The match score is really relevant, obviously being three points away, him being four points, okay, he finds the pass, which was, I think, a good play. And maybe I'm going to get an error there in the analysis, because this was a very difficult position. Nevertheless, I am two away, and he's four away. This is the ultimate gammon go match score. This is where his aggression is the highest as it gets at any score in backgammon. But I don't know if he knows that. Uh, so let's see, 4-1, I could double hit or I could just play. Yeah, let's double hit. Even though I'm supposed to be playing safe, it just felt like an obvious double hit. Oh, this is not so good. Okay, we're consolidating. We're consolidating. Double sixes, a decision for him, a chance to make a mistake here. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna make the ace point? Is he gonna bring, he makes that play, okay. Uh, okay, I really wanted the, I really wanted to uh, anchor up here, but I guess it's a pretty good roll as well. We could make the ace point, but because we have such a big stack here, I choose to just make the, the, the 17 point after hitting, he's going to attack here. Definitely going to attack on his 5 point. Oh, he didn't. Okay. Maybe he doesn't know how aggressive he should be at this score. Huh. I'm not the one who's supposed to be aggressive here, but I think we have to hit. Ouch. Ouch, ouch. That's a powerful roll there. Okay, he's supposed to be doubling here. Big double, yeah, and at this score, I mean, it's an easy take for money, but I don't think I can take it at this score. There's too many plots here. Yeah, I'm gonna give it up because of the score. Four away, two away, I'm playing gammon safe. Okay, six, five, that's a double hit. For those of you who don't know, that's how you respond to that opening roll. For one, okay, so here I have the choice. Do I hit loose, which is what we usually do, or do we just make the seven point? And it's, it's better to just make the, or the 18 point 
here on the screen. Yeah, good play. 5-3, I'm gonna make an anchor here. Quite nice to have that advanced anchor. Another double one, wow. Okay, 6-4, hmm, <laughs> I thought I could hit, but I'm blocked. So let's see, I'm not gonna make the two point here. My game plan is priming, so I'm just gonna run with the rear checker. 6-3, yeah, so he hits and brings it in. 1-6, I don't wanna strip my midpoint here, so I'm coming out instead, instead of playing this one down, and leave, to leave my midpoints. Oh, he's doubling here. Maybe it's okay, actually. He's three away, two away. He needs to be aggressive, but this one I can never pass. I have an advanced anchor. He still has, has a long way home with that rear checker. Double sixes, not bad. Not bad. I think you bring all three down, and then I think you slot the two point. I think that's the way to play it. Okay, he slots the, the ace point, but look at this. Cool. I got a little five prime going. Ah, that's a lucky roll. He gets to run to freedom. Uh, now I'm in trouble. He's going to win two points here. At least I'm never going to lose a gammon from this position. But uh, yeah, let's liberate a back checker. Again, decreasing the gammons. Just avoiding that freak gammon where you get stuck with three checkers over there in your enemy's home board. 3-1, just developing. 5-4. I'm far behind in the race, so just sit tight on the anchor. And he should just clear from the rear here. Oh, that's a mistake. He should clear this point. He should clear that point. I'm going to slot the two point. Playing efficiently. Okay, 5-2. Just play it like this. 4-3, again he gets lucky, huh? Look how stripped he was. Uh, let's play it like this. Slotting the ace point. <sighs> he rolls really well. Okay. I'm not crunching yet, but now I got, I have to leave the anchor. I have to leave the anchor. Am I leaving with both? Do I have racing chances here? Hmm. No, I think it's better to stay and give him a chance to roll a 6-3. Okay, now I should just go. And it's a straight race. And I'm a big underdog. I'm not completely without chances here. I could get lucky. Maybe I have like 20% or something. Ah, that's not good. 4-1. So I'm just playing from my phone here, guys. And we just opened up the match on the laptop and put it on the big screen. So I'm playing on the back of the Galaxy app here on my phone. And um, I really want to win this match because there's a lot of rating points I'm going to lose if I lose to this guy. <laughs> How to get to the number one spot on the Gammon Galaxy if I keep losing these matches, right? To the 1600. Come on. Ah. Okay, two points. Crawford, well, I have 32% here, match winning chances. Assuming we're equally good, which we're not, you know, I have a pretty big advantage over this guy, presumably. Um, so maybe I have something like 40% here or something to win this match still. So all hope is not lost. We can still win this. I think he just made a mistake there, by the way, with 3-1. It's better to just make the five point. We're going to hit him, send him back, send him back. Let's hit it. Oh, he hit that one. Uh... Come in with the one, down with the four. Keeping some connection between the back checkers and bringing the builder down to my nine point. Okay, he should split the back checkers here. Yeah, that was a mistake. He should split the back checkers. You know what? I'm up in the race. So I should probably just get out of there. He should definitely split his back checkers before I get a real position over here. Right now I'm still underdeveloped, but shortly in a few rolls I won't be. I will 
start to develop my position. So I think he should... Oh, he didn't split again. And I roll a double three. Now that he's double slotted, I can just go ahead and play offensively here. I don't mind to have these blots in the outfield. It doesn't matter because I'm just going to hit him right back if he hit, hits me with a fly shot. Okay, now it's dangerous for him to split. If he wants to run all the way, he's opening up his position. So I think it's too dangerous for him to split now, which means that I really have him where I want him right now in a priming battle. I could win a gammon here. This is, this is nice. Okay, so now he should split. He should definitely split with the three and then button up somewhere with the one over here. He needs to not get primed in, in an ace point game because he could lose a gammon from an ace point game. Uh, so I'm hoping that he doesn't split, actually. Well, am I? I think so. I think I'm hoping he doesn't split. I only have uh, seven men in the zone. No, sorry, nine men in the zone. It's not a whole lot of ammunition. Um, now I'm making not the best winning play, but I'm going to play this one down here to have more ammunition for the gammon. The winning play was just to go five and perhaps a two. Uh, but I played aggressively to, to maximize gammon chances. Now, this is not good. This is a bit annoying. Okay, coming home. He can't really hit me here because then, I, then he leaves a double shot from the bar. So I don't think he's going to hit me. I've got 54 seconds left. How is he going to play this move? Um, he could actually play four down and then cover up with a deuce. I think maybe that's the best play. But I predict that he's going to play six to two with a four, just a safe one. And then maybe five to three with a two. Okay. He made the ace point. Ah, that's another move, another way to play it. Um, let's go for the four prime here. I'm leaving a shot, but I'm making a four prime. Double six is not good. Well, not bad either. But um, I have kind of a crunching position. I really want to get going now. Okay, this is go time. Look at this move. I'm going to cover my ace point and I'm going to split my anchor here. If he wants to hit me, go ahead. Okay, six one. That's a good roll. But I do get some. I do get some fly shots from the bar. Um, step up, duplicating the threes. Yeah, go ahead and hit loose. He's not going to. That's too dangerous. He might do the pick and pass, by the way, which I think is incorrect. I think you've got to play safe. I'm not sure. Okay, look at this beauty. There you go. The gammons are in play. Ah, he got lucky. He came in immediately, just when I was about to win the gammon. Ah, and I get stuck with my back checker. He rolls a double five. <laughs> Oh, I might lose this match. That is a joker. Let's see if, see if he knows how to play. Okay, he chooses to run. I'm still up in the race. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. So, um, I, he makes a five prime here. Okay, at least I get an ace, but yeah. He should definitely point shift here. He shouldn't allow me to... to Roll a six. Okay, he knows. Good play. Six, four. Yeah, um, he manages to prime me despite having buried three checkers on his ace point. Yeah, we got to clear the six point here. Four, two. So now I think he should be looking at slotting the four point. Not making the four point. That's too risky because I could roll a six, but he could slot the four point. It's not as risky. Okay, he chooses to bury more checkers. At least we have a five-point board here. Okay, now we have a chance. I think he's going to clear the seven-point. Unfortunately, I have to make the three-point. And now he gets his five-point. It should be the other way around. Ooh, four-three. That's a fly shot. Beautiful and dancing. Big advantage. Big advantage. Let's just come around the corner and make the 14 point. 6-3. Beautiful. Oh, he slotted with a 6. 
I'm not sure that was correct. I don't think it was, but maybe it was, maybe it was actually. Uh, 6-3, let's just go all the way. Minimize blots. Okay, he's gonna anchor up here, make the golden point. But we have an advantage here. We have a clear advantage. This is now a holding game with two goalkeepers down there. So he does have a lot of contact. I think this is like a 65 to 35 proposition. Um, so pretty solid edge that we've established here in the middle game. And now we're kind of like past the middle game. The position got defined because look, I've got full freedom. So now I'm playing for the race. He's playing for contact. 6-4, the question is, should I go ahead and leave a shot here? Should I just make the seven point? Or should I just play safe? Huh. I'm gonna gamble here. I'm gonna leave a shot early on. Uh, that seven point or that bar point, 18 point is really gonna help me in the future. Okay, unfortunately, it seems that I have to bury a checker slightly and prematurely. Okay, I don't mind hitting him. I don't need a hit to win, but I do mind getting hit myself. So this is not good. I have to leave a shot. Um, yeah, let's put it in front of his most valuable anchor. Luckily he misses. That was a big swing right there. Um, okay. 3-2. I really want to make my four point here, but I can't. I have to clean up the blot. I have to clean up the blot and let's play the two. Let's get that daily builder activated and put it down there on the one point. Double one. That's a funky roll. So the thing is against the two point, the trouble point is my bar point. The trouble point is my bar point. Oh, this is tough. But something in me tells me that I should just play this move. It gives me more robustness here with all those spare checkers. But I mean, it, go, it contradicts the, look at this, now I have to bury checkers. Usually when you're playing against the 23 point anchor, it's the bar point that's the trouble point. That's the one you want to clear first. Uh, so I did something a little bit unorthodox there, but I just felt like it gave me a more robust position. Look at all these fives that just goes to the ace point. Maybe I was wrong, you know. Maybe I was wrong. And I choose to play safe, not leave a shot. Oh. Oh. This is bad. This is bad. Oh, thank God. Okay, I'm still surviving. But I think it's like a 50-50 game by this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. I'm completely getting completely destroyed here. I'm down to like pff, less than 5% winning chances, maybe even 3, 2%. Completely losing position. Yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we were losing this match. Uh, we did have one complicated game though, the one with the back game, where it was like, okay, am I good enough to double, is it too good to double? And we had a lot of cube actions there. And I think I ended up doubling something that might have been a little bit too good to double, but I was pretty confident that he was gonna take the cube actually. And he surprised me and passed it. Um, so that's interesting to see. Um, in the post-match analysis, but let's see, I just wanna get the error rate win now. That's the most important, that's the most important thing at this point. Because if I win the error rate, I'm only losing half the amount of rating points. If he beats me on the error rate, that would be really bad because the rating difference here is like <laughs> from 2300 to 1600. That would be very bad. Yeah, this is game over. Yes. I can might as well just resign this match. I have 0% match winning chances here at this point in this race. Should we give it? One more. Let's see if we can get a double six. No, I'm gonna resign. Resign the match. This is hopeless. So congratulations to Af Shalom. Let's see. 
Let's see who plays better. Okay, good. 4.1 in a rather complicated game versus 14. So I do lose 7.7 .7 rating points, but uh, nevertheless, it could have been worse, right? I could have lost both, but I'll keep on fighting. Hopefully within not too long, you'll see me at the top of the ranking on Backgammon Galaxy, but you never know. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, this was a Grandmaster Sharing Secrets video. I hope you liked it. Smash the like button. Follow us on Instagram. I'm Mark Olson 10 And of course, Bagamon Galaxy. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.